guys welcome back to take dose and in this video we will see the my calendar one problem which is from lead code number 729 it is based on the non intersecting intervals problem and we will be seeing uh, three approaches to solve this problem at the end i will show you the optimal approach let us now look at the problem statement in this problem you are implementing a program to use as your calendar we can add a new event if adding the event will not cause a double booking a double booking happens when two events have some non-empty intersection that is uh, some moment is common to both events the event can be represented as a pair of integers start and end that represents a booking on the half open interval that means a uh, start to end but start uh, point is included and end point is not included the range of the real number x will be uh, start less than equals to x less than end because the end is not included hence we put a less than and not less than equals to we need to implement the my calendar class where my calendar initializes a calendar object and we have a booking api uh, which will take two uh, integer start and end which will return true if the event can be added to the calendar successfully without causing a double booking otherwise we need to return false and we do not add the event to the calendar so this is the entire problem statement let's look at the constraint the constraint uh, says that the timeline will be from 0 to 10 to the power of 9 okay and we will have at most 10 to the power 3 calls for the booking api okay so uh, let's look at an example for better understanding let's say that our intervals array contain 10 comma 20 15 comma 25 and 20 comma 30 now in this particular problem you are not given the entire interval array at once but this is kind of an online algorithm an online algorithm is one where inputs keep coming one by one and you have to keep generating output after every input okay so you are not given access to the entire data set at once in this case it is kind of an online problem so first i will be seeing only 10 comma 20. now if you see at the interval 10 comma 20 then i have given 10 uh, with a filled uh, circle and the 20 is like a hollow circle because this interval 10 to 20 means 10 is included and 20 is not included okay so for the range which is not getting included for the number i am putting a hollow circle and for those which gets included for them it is a solid circle fine so let's see if they can be included so initially we do not have any booking done so our booking array is completely empty in the beginning right so can this 10 comma 20 be uh, booked yes because initially we did not have any booking so this can be booked therefore we have to return true for 10 comma 20 now after this booking is done this slot will not be available for any other booking now the new booking uh, comes for 15 comma 25 now if you look at it 15 to less than 20 there is an overlap and therefore we need to return false because this part is overlapping the 20 is not overlapping okay because uh, 20 can be included now 15 to less than 20 is overlapping so we have to return false here if you look at the third one it is saying 20 to 30 so see this second interval was not included so till now we have included uh, 10 to 20 but not including this 20 so can we include 20 including 20 to less than 30 yes because 20 was not included so i can take it and all the range is outside of our booking range right so simply we have to return here true so our answer will be true false true and this should be returned after every call to booking so this is kind of an online algorithm right now let's look at uh, the intersection checks so a few of the cases i have already drawn so that you can understand how to check so if the booking already done is s1 e1 and the request which is coming is for s2 e2 then you see that if s2 lies in between s1 and e1 in such a way that s2 is uh, greater than equals to s1 but less than e1 then this will definitely overlap and we cannot do booking in that case in the second scenario you see that uh, this e2 e2 is greater than s1 and less than e1 if that is the case again you cannot provide booking for the second interval again look at the third case in this case the s2 e2 both lie inside so you can just follow the previous condition and s2 lies in between s1 and e1 therefore uh, you cannot do the booking and similarly this interval the second interval is enclosing the first interval so in this case 
neither S2 nor E2 lies in between S1 E1, but but S1 may lie in this range and E1 may also lie within the range of S2 E2, right? So these are some possible checks that uh, you can think about and then can come up with an answer. Now let's look at uh, the simple approach for solving this problem. So let's take these four intervals, which will be coming one by one, okay? So this is, let's say, index 0, index 1, 2, and 3. Now when the first interval comes 10, 20, we do not have any booking. Let's say I'm maintaining a simple array, uh, which is the booking array, and our array is initially empty. So can I uh, do the booking of 10, 20? Yes, I can do the booking of 10, 20. So let's insert it into the array. And our answer will be returning true in this case. Okay, true uh, for the first incoming request. Now, what about the second incoming request 0, 5? We have to check for any overlapping booking with 0, 5. Now, there is only one entry 10, 20, which is not overlapping with 0, 5. And therefore, uh, for 0, 5, we will insert 0, 5 in the array and I will return true again. Now, let's look at 5, 15. In this case, uh, we will again be matching for all the bookings done uh, and saved in the array. So 10, 20, is it overlapping with 5, 15? Yes, it is overlapping, right? 10 to 15 is overlapping. Therefore, we need to return false and this will not be inserted in the array because the booking was not done here, okay? Now let's look at 5, 10. Now again, we we keep matching from left to right. If Is 5, 10 overlapping with 10, 20? No, it is not overlapping because 10 is inclusive here, but this 10 is on the end part so this will not be inclusive right it will start from 5 and it will go till 10 but 10 is not getting included and here 10 is getting included so it is it is fine okay now check 5 comma 10 with 0 comma 5 again they are not overlapping with the same reasoning therefore we can insert 5 comma 10 and we have to return true in this case as well so this is the answer because uh, these were the four requests which were coming one by one. So in this simple approach, what we did was we were maintaining a simple array where I will be saving all the booking successfully done. And for every new booking request which is coming, I will be iterating through the entire array and uh, checking if that current booking is possible after having checked with all the bookings already done. If it is possible, return true, otherwise return false. So for every item coming, we might end up iterating through n number of bookings because all the bookings might have been done, right? So in this case, the time complexity will be order of n square. And since all the intervals can be saved in our booking array, therefore the space complexity will be order of n. So what else can we do apart from this simple array? The second uh, thing that we can try is using a sorted list and applying the logic of insertion sort, right? So I have already made a video on insertion sort. You can just click on the I button or get the link from the description below and check it out. Uh, let's look at the solution here. So in this solution, we will again maintain a similar array, but then this array will now be sorted. Fine. So what I will do is uh, I will be storing this 10 comma 20 into a sorted array. And I mean, initially the array is empty. So 10 comma 20 has to be included, right? And I will have an answer set, which is the result and it will be returning true. So I will not have an array, but just to showcase the answers, I'm just uh, saying that it will re uh, return true. Now the next item which is coming is 0, 5. So what I do is I will uh, apply insertion sort and I will keep on checking the item if it is overlapping or not. So I will check from let's say right to left and I will be checking. Is this 0, 5 overlapping with this 10, 20? No. And there is no item to the left. So first 0, 5 will be inserted and then we will check. If they are overlapping, then this will be dropped off. If they are not overlapping, then 0, 0,5 will move to the left. Fine. If you apply this strategy, then 0, 0,5 will come to the left and then comes your 10, 20, right? And then uh, here again, you will have a true. Again, if 5, 15 comes, then uh, 5, 15 will be inserted to the right hand side, okay? And then again, you will be checking 5, 15 with 10, 20. If they are overlapping, then we, you need to return false but before returning you have to drop off this item from the array right now if you look at this technique there is no benefit in maintaining the sorted list even if you apply let's say binary search on this sorted list but still in order to create a space in between the array you have to shift all the elements to the right hand side okay and that makes it linear time for every item insertion therefore the insertion sort uh, and the binary search application will not help using just a simple array 
and that is why the time complexity will still be n square and the order of n for the storage and it is the same as the simple approach right so we know that a simple sorted array is not the way to go therefore let's look at an optimal approach idea which is based on binary search uh, but we will be optimizing the time complexity now if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number so in this case the in the optimal approach we will be using either a sorted set or an ordered map and they both are implementations of balanced bst particularly the red black trees okay these type of trees have a height guarantee of log n so all the operations insertion searching are generally order of log n fine so since this provides a log n guarantee as compared to the array which is order of n therefore this will be much faster because even though binary search can find the exact interval in log n time in a sorted array but still we need to do the insertion and insertion will be order of n because we need to shift the items but in balanced bst both searching and insertion is log n right so it will make the entire time complexity and log n uh, let's look at the idea the next starting position will always be greater than equals to the previous end position according to this idea let's say that uh, we have a bunch of intervals already given and let me just name it as s1 e1 s2 e2 and s3 e3 now if a new interval is coming and let's say this interval is somewhere here okay s4 e4 and i will assume that s4 is greater than e1 and e4 is less than s2 now if you have to find the correct position then i know that the next starting position wherever it has to be present it's it, its starting position has to be greater than equals to the ending position of the previous interval right so according to this if i know all the endpoints i have all the endpoints in the sorted order then if i apply binary search then first i will end up at the mid value which is e2 and i will compare e2 with s4 if e2 is larger i will go on the left side again i will compare this e1 with s4 if this e1 is less than equals to s4 i will go on the right hand side and this is where it ends therefore the previous one was s1 e1 and s4 has to be inserted after e1 before insertion we have to check that s4 must be uh, greater than equals to e1 and 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 similarly this e4 has to be less than s2 okay e4 should be less than equals to s2 simply so this condition should suffice now let me show you the binary search uh, apis which are available so there are two types of binary search popularly used which is lower bound and upper bound if you have a sorted array with duplicates then if you apply lower bound on let's say 2 then it will give you the index or the iterator of the first occurrence of 2 which is 1 okay and if you apply upper bound on the same element 2 then it will give you the first element which is larger than 2 it will return the index or the iterator so it will return 3 similarly if you apply lower bound on 5 it will return index 6 and if you apply upper bound on 5 then it will uh, return index 7 right so this is just a recap of lower bound and upper bound let me show you the dry run of this idea using the ordered map now in this map i will be tracking the key value pair as end point and start point okay so the first interval is coming and if i apply binary search on the ordered map there is no item at all so this 10 comma 20 will get inserted okay if we reach to the end of the ordered map that means we can insert it so if 10 comma 20 is inserted i will insert 20 which is the end point and the and the starting point is 10 right so let's say uh, we have inserted 10 comma 20 here 10 comma 20 so 20 is exclusive and 10 is inclusive okay and we will return true in this case now let's look at the second interval we will be seeing the starting position and apply binary search on all the endpoints that we have already booked and recorded right so we will be applying the upper bound because we need to find the next starting position and you know that according to the upper bound when you want to find out the first uh, index which is uh, which is just greater than whatever we are finding let's say upper bound on 2 which was equals to 3 then you have to apply upper bound right that is the first index of the next greater element something like that so i will be applying upper bound for 0 and it will stop at this index 20 now i will be checking 
if this 0 comma 5 lies within this range of 10 comma 20 if it is true that means it is overlapping right so since we had already applied upper bound we know that this 20 has to be greater than 0 so we just need to check with this start position so if this start position is uh, greater than equals to this end position then this is completely fine okay so if this 10 is greater than equals to 5 then it is a valid interval and yes it is valid so i will be tracking end position and start position and i'll be returning true in this case again i will be checking for 5 comma 15 i will apply upper bound on 5 and it will stop again at 20 when it stops at 20 again i will check if 10 is greater than equals to 15 and it and and that is not true so i will be returning false and i will not be inserting it okay so i will be going to the next interval 5 comma 10 again i will be applying upper bound on 5 and i will stop at 20 and when i do that i will be checking this start point if 10 is greater than equals to 10 uh, then this is completely valid and yes it is valid so i'll be returning true and inserting 10 and 5 this will be in sorted order even though i have shown it unsorted it will be sorted right so this is the entire optimal approach and i hope you have understood this the time complexity of this approach will be order of n log n and the space complexity of order of n because we are using the ordered mapper set okay so let's now look at the code the code is very self-explanatory we have taken intervals map where the key is the end point and the value is the start point okay we have not defined anything in the constructor of the class so simply this is the booking api so first i will be applying the upper bound and finding the next position where we should actually be storing it and then just checking if it is overlapping or not if we reach to the end point that means there was no overlap otherwise uh, if we stop somewhere then we will be checking uh, if the second value that means the starting value is greater than equals to the end point of an interval right so if any of these conditions hold true i will be inserting the interval and return true otherwise if we cannot insert if there is an overlap i'll be returning false so this is the entire code i hope you understood it if you have any problem then do comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming videos see you guys in the next video thank you